come dry. There's no limit to your promise. Jesus, you have done it all for me. Jesus, you have done it all for me. Don Wood is an associate. He was a longtime litigation lawyer with quite a popular firm in the Dallas area, in the Dallas courtrooms. A few years ago, Don phased out his legal practice. He phased out his legal practice to pursue ministry credentials. I remember talking to him early on about why he would make this he, uh, transition from a law office to the offices of First United Methodist Church in Richardson on the pastoral care staff. His response to why he made this transition is stuck with me to this day. He says, you know, in the field of law, I tell you what, in my book, I've never found a legal remedy of being able to address fully the human condition. A legal remedy has never been able to address fully the human condition. And so he said he did his own soul work, and after doing his own soul work, he wanted to help some others do soul work, and he made that transition. That transition is, has to do with the spirit that was told to the children a moment ago and was read here in the text. There's 21 references to the spirit in Romans chapter 8. They reference with that which is within us. The spirit is who our true self is as opposed to our false self. I invite you, encourage you to boot some of the modern reading around the, the difference between the true self and the false self that is being lifted up by many of the modern mystics like Richard Rohr and Thomas Burton and Susan Stabile. This is an area of life that we need to recapture, something that was a part of the mystic tradition hundreds of years ago. And I think the spirit, the soul excavation needed for us to make room for Christ's spirit in our lives again is much needed in this 21st century which we face. We are to, of wedding our spirit, the spirit within us, so that we become who we are because the spirit of Christ dwells in us. The Spirit of Christ is like a geyser gushing through us, coursing through us. It's wanting to get rid of all that which gets in the way for us to truly be ourselves. It wants to remove those shadow selves, our false selves from us, so we can be the true, crafted, spirit-crafted person God made us to be. But that soul work that we have to do always begins with some excavation. And excavation is absolutely necessary. Soul work is kind of like building highways in Texas. Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's never easy and never is it really ever done. <laughs> I, 
You see, soul work requires us to deal with our shadow self. The shadow self is sometimes described as our ego. Soul work is that part where we address the shadow self that while the shadow self can be externally never really, some people will say, uh, I may say it this way, shadow self is not always externally seen as bad. What do I mean by that? Your shadow self is that persona, that person in you, that's your boss, that's your mom and dad, uh, that your friends, they like you for that person. They even reward you for being that person. It's the agent within us that props up our identity. Our shadow self is who people think we are sometimes because that's all they ever see. It's what gives us stability in life. And for anyone to challenge my shadow self feels a little dangerous, feels unstable. But the shadow self requires some excavation work. (laughs) It's hard to get through into the shadow self. Because we will deny, we will cover up any kind of deficits. We don't want people to see those inadequacies in our life. We want to be liked. We want to be accepted. We want to be successful. And many times our shadow self makes us look like that's what our life is like. They are pursuits that prop up the niceties of Russell's public image. Let me straighten up here. And we will go to great efforts to protect and to preserve our self-created social identities that are essentially self-serving. Frankly, we're comfortable and we are well-trained in making even selfishness look like prudence. I'm just being prudent here. We can make selfishness look like common sense. We can make selfishness, you know, look like... I'm trying to do what's right for others. We're good at it. We work hard to conceal our contrarian ways, our negative aspects. And when asked how we're doing, we just say, well, I'm just fine. Thank you for asking. And that's why, friends, this is the the human condition of all of us. It's true in all of our existence. And we should be more merciful than judgmental than like we have become because each of us in own one of our own ways are working on our hypocritical ways. We're working on that shadow self. All of us, each of us, at times are driven by fear, wanting to control something, wanting to manipulate something, and unfortunately sometimes vengeance. The shadow self, though, will not go down without a fight. But eventually what happens is this. The expression of your emotional reactions begin to be, I don't know, spoken. (laughs) Spoken in ways that when you say them out loud to the people, someone goes, wow, that's kind of out of proportion to what's happening. You ever been in that moment? But eventually what happens is the excavation work begins. When feelings we have repressed finally have space to come to the surface and they continue to be expressed. Yes, they'll be, oh, what about this? What about that, 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 you know, that shadow self that worries, that's anxious. And over time, that grows more frequent and more intense. And they begin to ramp up. Why? Because who we were trying to be, our public image, that person whom we constructed, that identity, begins to fail us or has failed us. And the necessary work of trying to excavate why it is that I want to live with those things in my life usually comes with, usually begins when we begin to suffer. That's why they say suffering is sometimes necessary. For the suffering causes us to realize that our false self cannot navigate the current challenge before us. Have you been there, my friends? Where you faced the necessity of your shadow self? Where you did that hard work, where you dug into something in your soul and you said, this has to be removed. (laughs) And you know, you've done the work. Your personal life was probably altered, right? Something changed significantly. And in your spiritual life, Faith, hope, and love, you know, those keystones of our lives. (laughs) 
suddenly were transformed in a way that they became real again in our lives. Have you done the work? Excavated what needed? Well, let me tell you how that has to happen. Once you say, I want to do the necessary work, you've got to get honest. We can't construct our soul. Our soul just is. Our soul is the God that is I am within all of us. It's the part of us that are, your soul is the part of it that already knows and seeks God. We speak of the United Methodist as prevenient grace. Excavation goes, I honestly want to deal with the parts of my life that need to be excavated. So I can begin to reroute my life. Make the changes. How did Jesus say it? We become, we begin to focus more on the log in our own eye instead of the speck in yours. <sighs> it's hard work, but it's honest work. We face our shadow self by turning to the one who breathed life into us. And that spirit uh, that all within us, the spirit of Christ that's within us, begins to work within my spirit. And begin, little by little, I don't want that false part of my life. I begin to let it go. It, that which has prevented me from knowing truly who I am, I am begin to let go because I'm honestly facing it. And this is one of the ironies of honest work. Your enemies may become your teachers. We assume there were people working against us. But actually, they're the ones who might know us best because they've had to deal with my false self the longest. They provide us perspective that says, look, this is where you need to dig in. And when we honestly hear our foes, space can be created for us to make substantive changes to be our true self. Honesty moves us closer to the light. We now better see ourselves. I like to say it. We better see what everybody else has already seen, but, but except us. Because we've been honest in the light. In the light, there are only fellow travelers who honestly help us get to the whole place that we need to be, the wholeness and the holiness and we no longer wander alone. I've got to cover this up. It's only if I get too close to anybody. No, we know I'm just walking with you. A fellow traveler who by the grace of God is living into who God made us to be. We are free to live as a child of God. Our true self. I like Ben Folds. He sings in the luckiest. I wish I could sing it. I, can't, I probably can't find the tune. <laughs> I don't get many things right the first time. In fact, I'm told that a lot. <laughs> now I know all the wrong turns, the stumbles, and the falls brought me here. He's being honest with his false self. And we come to that place in life where we say, I just want to be honest. I don't want to hide behind that shadow anymore. I want to be clear who I am and who God made me to be. And you know what that's called? That's called divine union. Paul wrote about it this way in, in Colossians, the same thing we read in Romans a minute ago. He says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things of earth. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ, in union with Christ. That's why we want to do some excavation. So that stuff that's preventing us from knowing that oneness with God can be let go. And we can begin the rerouting process we'll talk about next week. But hear this. It says it on the screen. We're not, when this, we do this work, we're not a different person. We just become who we are. How about that? Are you ready to dig in? You ready to get a shovel and do some work? Soul work is not easy work, but it's good work, my friends. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's how I understand the Word of God of you, the people of God of this day, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.